Hi everyone, my name is Kristen Bitsigai and this presentation will cover how you can effectively manage teams within nonprofit organizations. We'll be basing the majority of our conversation off of the content of Patrick Lincioni's The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. If you haven't read that book in its entirety, I highly recommend that you do so. It's great content for people at any level in an organizational structure. I find that Lanchoni's points are particularly salient in the nonprofit world, which is where I've spent the majority of my career. The first barrier to an effective team dynamic is the absence of trust. When team members don't trust each other, they're not willing to be vulnerable. You won't see your team's best work if they don't believe that they won't be ridiculed for their ideas or that they, what they say won't be used against them later. You can't force your team to trust one another, but you can do your best to foster an environment that naturally creates trust. I'm a firm believer in team building exercise. I'm not talking about trust falls and egg races. I'm talking about spending time to earnestly understand the personalities, work styles, learning preferences, and comfort zones of team members so that everyone can figure out the best team, di team dynamic. At the blog page where this video is posted, I will list some really good resources for team building exercises. I should mention though that it's your responsibility as the manager to build a team that works well together. If you've got a team full of extroverts who thrive on interactions with others and you throw in a single introvert who really needs time to think and prepare before speaking and who values alone time, you can't expect the team to work well or understand one another if you're not actively addressing everyone's needs. Another one of Lynchoni's dysfunctions is the fear of conflict, the preference for seeking artificial harmony over constructive, passionate debate. In the nonprofit world, team members do tend to be really invested in and care deeply about the cause of the organization they work for. If your team shies away from constructive debate, it's really a sure sign that there's trouble brewing. Um, your team probably lacks the trust to have that sort of interaction. If you've built the trust of your team and they're still hesitant to engage in constructive debates, your responsibility is to acknowledge that conflict can be a good and necessary part of group conversation. Lynchoni recommends mining for conflict. While it's tough to imagine that actually seeking out disagreements, Lynchoni points out that total consensus is impossible. It's an unachievable task. Um, not everyone will agree on a single best way to do things. If you mind for conflict, you're encouraging alternate viewpoints so that every idea can be heard and given consideration. People may be unhappy that their suggestions weren't adapted, but more likely than not, they'll be glad that they were at least heard. The third dysfunction Lynchoni outlines is a lack of commitment. Even in a nonprofit where people care about the organization, this can be a problem. While your team members may remain committed to the cause, they can lose their commitment to the organization and team by repeatedly feigning buy-in for group decisions. And by now you may have noticed that these concepts build on one another and lead to the next one. So team members didn't agree with the decision that wasn't constructively debated because they didn't trust the team enough to engage in the debate. So now they're not committed to the direction the organization is taking. The suggestion that Lanchoni makes is um, the one that I think can be immediately applied to any meeting at any nonprofit anywhere in the world is to utilize cascading messages, um, which means that at the end of each meeting, the team should review key decisions and then agree on what should and shouldn't be communicated to the rest of the staff. Um, if that's a, you know, two people who are part of one department having that meeting, maybe that means they will only communicate those important decisions to the rest of the team. Or if it's a staff meeting as a whole, maybe they, you all will decide together what should be communicated um, to the board of directors. Through this exercise, team members can ensure that they're on the same page about all major decisions. Effective teams are accountable for their actions inactions, behaviors, and results. Each individual in the team should re be responsible for his or her, her own performance, of course, but um, each team member also has an obligation to call out his or her peers on counterproductive behaviors. Um, I don't mean to say that uh, they should be you know, pointing out each other's inadequacies, but definitely counterproductive behaviors should be um, discussed. 
As Lynchoni points out, a team that isn't able to do that encourages mediocrity. As the manager, you need to clearly communicate and evaluate the goals of the organization and the team. And then, and this is the key part to me, you really need to listen to your team. I've heard of a manager telling an employee during a performance review, this is about you, not your coworker, when the employee was trying to explain that her job performance hinged on her coworker's ability to complete his basic job functions. In an effective team dynamic, team members should not only feel comfortable discussing those issues with their boss, but more importantly with the coworker who wasn't performing at the expected level. The final issue we'll discuss is inattention to results. When team members don't wholeheartedly believe in the team's ability to achieve goals, they can strike off on their own and focus more on their own personal success before team success. I haven't really directly quoted Lynchoni during this presentation, but there are two lines from this chapter that I, that I really want to share verbatim. The key, of course, is to define our goals, our results, in a way that is simple enough to grasp easily and specific enough to be actionable. And also, make the results that we need to achieve so clear that no one would even consider doing something purely to enhance his or her own individual status or ego, because that would diminish our ability to achieve our collective goals. We would all lose. So, these are the five dynamics of a team, and more importantly, the steps you can take as a nonprofit manager to overcome these pitfalls, um, to overcome these pitfalls and produce a highly functional team. As a reminder, I've listed resources and tools you can use on my blog, and all of the other information that I used for this presentation really um, came directly from Patrick Lynchoni's book. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on my blog posting or um, in the Blackboard uh, discussion um, table, or you can email me at krbitsyguy at bsu.edu, and thanks for watching.